Hey friends and welcome back. My name is Khalid and in this video we're going to talk about the USMLE Step 3 exam, which is the third and final exam in the USMLE series. Bear in mind you can only take this exam once you've already finished Step 1 and Step 2. Also, if you're an IMG, you're going to need your ACFMG certificate. It's also slightly different in the fact that it is a two-day exam with day one mainly focusing on step one content as well as biostats and is a mix of six blocks of 39 to 38 questions. Day two, on the other hand, focuses more on clinical reasoning and clinical decision making with six blocks of 30 questions followed by 13 computer-based simulations. In this video, we'll be covering the timeline for the exam, the different resources you can use, the different study strategies you could employ, the different assessments to track your progress as well as some final tips for exam day. When it comes to the timeline of the exam, most people usually take the exam during intern year. Because intern year of residency is so hectic, the score that you get tends to lose its value. If you're interested in applying for a competitive subspecialty, even though the step one score is more important, I would at least recommend you try and aim for the average or above average when it comes to the step three. I personally would recommend you take the exam before intern year because it's easier to study and it leaves you with less things to worry about during intern year. Moreover, certain programs can sponsor an H-1B visa only if you've finished your step three exam at a suitable time. If that's something that interests you, then you should really look into trying to finish your Step 3 exam as soon as possible in order to meet the deadlines for certain programs that are offering the visa. When it comes to resources, if you've already watched my Step 1 video and Step 2 video, then you would know that UWorld is the gold standard again. Currently, at the time of making this video, there are around 1,700 questions, which could be easily managed within a month or two. I personally also use my Step 1 book, which had all my notes annotated in it, and I just revised certain pharmacological sections, such as antimicrobials and certain microbiology sections. I also reviewed the rapid review section at the end of the book, where they give you these sort of pattern recognition um, diseases, where they name certain triads and I found that to be very beneficial on the day of my exam. Moreover, due to the emphasis on biostats, especially on day one of the exam, I would really recommend you look into additional resources for biostats. I personally did not find UWorld Biostats Review to be fully encompassing. I personally have a playlist for biostats on my channel which you can go see right here in one of the corners and in the link in the description. I'm also working on another channel called ATP with a bunch of other colleagues and we also make biostats video on there so be sure to check them out. Now those resources really helped me with the MCQ portion of the exam, however there is a new component of the step 3 which are the computer based simulation. Now because this is a very new and intimidating portion of the exam, I'm going to make an entirely separate video detailing the ins and outs of the CCS cases. But for this video, to keep it brief, I mainly just use ccscases.com which I'll leave a link to in the description. There are also CCS cases being provided by UWorld, however I found ccscases.com to be a little bit better because they also offer for feedback, something that UWorld CCS cases unfortunately doesn't as of yet. What this means is that with ccscases.com, as you finish the case, you then get a nice little screen that sort of reminds you about everything that you did right and everything you did wrong. Now granted that we don't really know how the CCS cases are being graded, having some general feedback is still a lot better than having none, in my opinion. When it comes to study strategies, because you're not going to be studying as long for this exam, then you don't really need to focus too much on maintaining long-term retention of knowledge. Just use whatever feels comfortable for you in order to remember knowledge as you keep doing questions and CCS cases. I personally use Anki to make my cards and be able to remember the concepts that I'm learning from UWorld, but you could use the UWorld notebook, you could use a separate Word document, or you could even take handwritten notes. Whichever works for you, just find a certain strategy that works best with you and stick to it. When it comes to assessments, unfortunately there aren't that many that we could use. I personally only use UWSA1, UWSA2, and the Free120. And from everything that I understood, these assessments underpredict you. And that was the case for me as well during my actual exam. So try and use them as screening tools to figure out whether or not you're going to pass the exam. If you're passing the assessments, odds are you're going to pass the exam. Finally, let's share some tips for exam day, and these are going to be very similar to the ones I shared in step 1 and step 2 with some modifications for the step 3 exam. Because this is a two-day exam, you can have some days in between as breaks, so I would recommend trying to at least put two to five days of breaks. However, it's up to you. You can put a maximum of two weeks between both test days. However, I recommend keeping it short, especially because you're likely going to feel tired after doing the first day and you just want to get the second day over with. In the last week leading up to your exam, you can use the USMLE 
USMLE content outline to kind of revise all the different concepts that they could ask about across all the USMLEs. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you try and revise all step one content because that's just unrealistic. You can instead focus on certain things like antimicrobials, certain bug characteristics, and the rapid review section like I mentioned earlier. If there's extra time, you could also revise certain things like certain pathophysiology of high yield diseases as well as pharmacological sections of high yield sections. Before each exam day, I really don't recommend that you try and explore new information or new concepts. Just try and relax and have the day off and try and rest. Make sure to get yourself some snacks and coffee. I personally took dates with me, which I felt really worked for me. However, bring whatever works for you. Just be sure it's not something that's going to spike your insulin or something that's going to make you feel a bit too sleepy. During the exam, make sure to take all your breaks. Because you only get six blocks, they give you less break time proportionately. However, try and really plan it out and make sure you're using all your break time and try and take breaks between every single block. With that, I wish you the best of luck on your step three exam and be sure to take a look on the CCS video that'll either drop soon or if you're watching this video by the time it's uploaded, it'll probably be in the link in the description below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to never miss any of my future videos. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.